Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we will explore Wavelove Go, the new ARA plugin that is available for Pro Tools users and brings audio repair and enhancement, spectral editing, MS capabilities and many other features directly into your Pro Tools session in a non-destructive environment. To open Wavelove Go, you can select an audio clip, right click on it and go to Wavelove and select Edit. Another way to do this is by selecting the clip, going to the clip menu, selecting Wavelab and edit. As you can see, the workspace of Wavelab Go is opened on the lower section. The plugin is scalable. We can undock it if we want to place it in another monitor, for example. And as mentioned before, it is a non-destructive environment. So the undos on Wavelab Go are independent from the undo of the Pro Tools project. If we edit the audio, we can always undo the processes with the arrows found at the top right corner in the comment bar. In the upper section of the plugin, we have different tabs with lots of functionalities. I will go through these tabs in detail in just one minute. First, I want to mention the different display modes we have available. Waveform, Rainbow, Spectrogram, and Wavelet. The waveform display is selected by default and it displays the waveform of the audio file. The rainbow display shows the spectral properties of the file as a multicolored waveform to identify patterns and spot certain frequency ranges. The spectrogram displays the frequency spectrum of the audio and allows you to make precise frequency based corrections. This is useful for cleaning up recordings, removing unwanted noise, or isolating specific frequencies, for example. And the wavelet display allows you to get a better look at the musically and rhythmically relevant portions of the spectrum. It displays a higher time resolution and higher frequency resolution, optimal for musical content. Aside the display modes, we find a turning wheel we can click and move with the mouse, and it has two different functionalities. When the waveform or rainbow display are selected, it will show the loudness RMS as an overlay. And when the spectrogram or the wavelet displays are selected, then we get the waveform of the audio displayed as an overlay for visual reference. There are further edit settings for both the spectrogram and the wavelet display. Here we can adjust the color scheme, magnitude range, frequency scale, FFT bands, so plenty of options to customize the way audio is displayed, and we have some presets in case you prefer a different color for the display mode. On the bottom left corner, we can change from left-right mode to MS editing mode. In this mode, the waveform on the top represents the mid signal and the waveform on the bottom represents the side signal. If we want to process only the side signal, we simply mute or delete the upper waveform and now we hear only the side signal. It is also possible to display two different views simultaneously. By double clicking on the three dots found in the middle of the workspace, we can activate two simultaneous display views. Let's say MS on the bottom and rainbow display on the top. We can sync both views pressing the button that contains two arrows. And to close the second display view, we simply click on the three dots again. Now let's take a look at the different tabs, starting with the View tab. With Navigate, we can go backwards and forward when the cursor position has changed. And we can also recall previous zoom factors. In the Zoom section, we have different zooming options. We can zoom as much as possible with the microscope. View all displays the entire audio file. We have the option to zoom our range selection. 
or zoom according to a particular time range. We can zoom horizontally and vertically and reset the zoom to zero dB in one click. In the cursor section, we can navigate markers in case there are any. We can jump to the beginning and end of the file. Also navigate the transients on the audio file. With edit cursor position, we can determine the cursor position according to a specific time. We have snap to zero crossing to snap the edit cursor to the nearest zero crossing point. With scroll, we can navigate to the start and end of the file or a selected audio range without affecting the edit cursor. Playback will change the way the waveform is displayed during playback. And with the snapshots, we can recall cursor positions, audio selections, and zoom factors. By clicking in options, we can select what gets stored on the snapshot, and we have up to four different snapshots available. And the last section named Peaks triggers the rebuilding of peak files. Then we have the Edit tab. In the Tools section, we have the option to make a time range selection. With the pen, we can redraw the waveform in case we need to quickly repair a waveform error. And with the Play tool, we can play back at the cursor position. In the Time Selection section, we have several options. With Range, we can define an accurate range selection. With Extend, we have various ways to specify the time selection. For example, we can make a selection from the start of the file to the current cursor position. With Toggle, we can toggle the range selection on and off. All selects the entire audio range. You can specify on which channels the selection should be made. And if we are in MS Edit mode, the channel selection will work by selecting the mid or the side signal. Regions allows you to select a range between two markers. Since we don't have any markers yet, it's not selectable at the moment. Then we have the Cut, Copy, Paste section, which is pretty straightforward. We can cut, copy, and paste a selection. When crossfading is enabled, automatic crossfades get applied when editing the audio file. Crop removes the audio found outside the selection. Mute replaces the audio selection with silence. And Delete deletes the audio selection. In the fade-in section, we have fade-in and fade-out with different shapes available. We can notch the selection to the right or to the left. When snapped to magnets is activated, edit-drag operations are snapped to the enabled magnets. And the last tool named Recover is only available in WaveLab Pro. Next, we have the Insert tab. Here we can create markers and set the desired name with the option of having a different name at the end of the marker. It is also possible to insert silence. And we also have a bleep sensor available. In the Process tab, we have commonly used processes. Gain changes the audio level. With Envelope, we can create an envelope for the gain level. And we can also remove the DC offset if necessary. On the Normalizing section, we can change the peak level of the audio file, apply different loudness standards, and correct the channel balance with Pan. In the Time and Pitch section, we have Time Stretching, Pitch Shifting, Pitch Bend. Resample is useful if we need to convert the sampled rate. Then we have Reverse 
and inverse phase. And we have a correction section with the option to resynthesize the waveform in case we need to replace a corrupt sample. The last processing tool simply swaps the stereo channels. Then we have the Spectrum tab. The spectrogram shows the frequency spectrum of the audio and offers spectral editing capabilities. We can define how the frequency spectrum will be displayed. There are different tools for selecting the spectrum. Time selection, lasso selection, rectangle, brush, and magic wand. When the magic wand is activated, clicking on the spectrogram automatically selects similar surrounding content. With harmonics, we can add harmonics to the selection. The processes can be set to have an effect on both channels or only a single channel. We can zoom an already selected area. We can extend the selection using the arrows, for example, to the beginning or end of the file. We can copy and paste selections of the spectrum with the option to change the level. Audio inpainting is only available with the full version of WaveLab, WaveLab Pro. With fine tuning, we can control the quality of the audio processing. Smoothing improves the transition between the processed and the non-processed region. And we can save and restore spectrum processes presets. Then we have a playback section where different playback options can be set. And in the Analyze tab, we have two options. With global analysis, we obtain important information about the file, like loudness, peaks, average pitch, and DC offsets, for example. And with the visual analysis, we can calculate the loudness profile and have it shown as an overlay on the audio editor. Once we are happy with the processes made to an audio file, we can make them permanent by right-clicking on the audio clip, going to WaveLab and selecting Render. I hope this video was helpful and that you enjoy the new extra features that WaveLab Go has to offer inside Pro Tools. Thanks for your attention and until next time.